M0FXB, welcome to my channel. At the bottom, we've got an all-star node made by G7RPG, and it transmits an analog signal to my dual band radio, which is C4FM and analog. This is the Yesu FT2D, fantastic older radio. I'm very cheap to buy at the moment, and I just like it. I just like the way it looks, nice big set. So anyway, why do we use the all-star node? It's because it links into a system called all-star, that is connected to repeaters and gateways all around the world so that we are sending a radio signal between this radio and this device inside is, a, is actually a Bofeng radio uh, and that is connected to a Raspberry Pi which looks like what is inside this hotspot this is a hotspot here but it has a Raspberry Pi and so does this unit but the difference is that this one is running what we call an MMDVM hat and this hat, which is inside this unit here, looks like this. They normally have an antenna poking out like that. And then you can put them onto a Raspberry Pi or a Pi Zero, which is much smaller, more the same size as this. And so that connects you to the system of DMR, D-Star Fusion and more that people, that repeater keepers are connecting and gateway keepers are connecting to you know to the to the internet which then connects to all the servers that are running these DMR D-Star Fusion talk groups reflectors rooms however way you want to call them that's what's happening so the system that the hotspots are are mostly using is called PiStar and this is PiStar this is what we see on my PC when people are talking and when we key the mic you get red and then when people talk you get history the all-star system my interface looks like this because it's made by G7 RPG, but it's it's actually joining into the all-star system, which looks like this, and everyone gets their own number, and, and they do as well with the Pi star system, you'll get a DMR number. The D star system, you'll get your core sign, and the fusion system, you tend to get room and node numbers. So if I want to talk to someone on the YSF system, all I would do is make sure that this, the settings of this hotspot have the same frequency as the radio. So on the A band there, got A and B, we are connected to 438575. You'll notice that this particular hotspot made by DV Mega, and that's the UK, has an IP address. And I can use that IP address to, to look at the dashboard that I just showed you. So let's just call through, see if anyone comes back on the on the digital system. Now, if uh, there is a repeater near me called GB7IS, and it, they will, if, if, I, if my radio can access their antenna on that hill, and they're connected to their version of this, and it'll be a, a, you know, a commercial version, then it's the same difference. It's just that my radio is making a longer journey between hit, hit my home and the repeater. But with a hotspot at home, it doesn't have to do that. You've got it on your thing. And a lot of people say, well, it's not real radio, but it, it, the repeater keeper is doing exactly the same thing. It's just that your, your, the journey for your radio is just a bit further. So let's just go. M0 FXB. M0 FXB. Can I have an audio check? M0 FXB. So let's see if, if anyone's accessing me. So my details come across as well as you're transmitting. And when, when you receive, if we're connected to the gateway, then people will just start, start chatting. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. And then this particular hotspot keeps a history. And when there's no one talking, you can look at history and all kinds of settings on these hotspots. They're really in a touch screen as well. So no one replied there. So let's go to the B band. And we'll connect my using my, my computer dashboard that you saw to Hubnet. Okay, now this goes red. Because it's an analog connection, it's going to be a deeper audio. It's, it's you know, the, the bandwidth is wider, so it doesn't sound so robotic. So if I just give a quick call through. M0 FXB audio check, audio check, M0 FXB. And you'll see that the colors change. Standby is blue, green I think was when it's receiving my radio, red is when it's transmitting outwards. So no audio check there, but you, but you can see I made it. And the dashboard, there is a dashboard 
where you can monitor the this particular node room that I'm connected to is called Hubnet, but there are many. This is just a snapshot, but there are literally thousands. And if you go to hubnet.work, you'll see that I just spoke there, see me there, and anyone else that talks in that system will also, you know, be be in this list. It even it even records your audio for I think thirty minutes. So this is a fusion radio. If I go and grab my DMR radio or my D-Star radio, all right, someone just came through on Hubnet, so I'll just reply to them. Yeah, you're making it fine, M0FXB. Nice, strong signal there. I've got my D-Star radio in the background. So I just need to switch my hotspot yeah, to D-Star. Yeah, yeah, cheers for that one. Yeah, you're working um, BBC quality yourself there. No problem at all there. From my three hotel, go Papa in. Oh, Brill, thanks very much. Andreas, uh, Western Supermare. 73 M0FXB. So what we need to do is just go to my hotspot and switch it to D-Star. All we do is go to configuration, like so, and then select D-Star, turn off YSF, apply changes, and we'll switch to D-Star. Just chatting here with Paul on... We're actually on Hubnet, and then I just um, yeah, you're sat Carolina, not too far from there's the D Star now. Look, just talking about drones. Paul's a really nice guy. So that's it. Hopefully, that gives you an idea of what we're getting up to. Bye for now. Seven three.